Ladies and gentlemen, or probably mostly gentlemen to be honest, I'm back and it's time to start over a new campaign. This is not one of the default ones. Um, this is The Devil's Descent by Field Marshal Blücher, I believe. It's, um, it's available on the Combat Mission Repository and uh, I think they're transferring it somewhere. If it's not there, it's probably on the thefewgoodmen.com. Uh, somewhere. I have played through this campaign before, so I do know how it goes. But uh, I figured I'd play this one because A, I love it, and B, if you're new to the game and you want a campaign to play to get a feel for how the campaign works, this is the one you should play. You'll be playing some of the best troops Americans have to offer against some decent German troops, but it'll it'll give you a general feel for how it progresses. And it's fun as hell. Um, so situation, we're part of the 82nd Airborne Division, we're going to Normandy, and we're going to kick ass. Uh, we're supposed to secure the western approaches to St. Marie Anglaise, uh, there's no guarantees for an accurate drop, though we would really like one. Um, if we end up in the city at the end of D-Day, we've done our job. Uh, we got to make our judgments on the spot as to how to proceed next day, be aggressive. We are C Company, 1st Battalion, 58th Parachute Infantry Regiment, 82nd Airborne Division. Uh, that, that, that. We don't really know what we're facing in terms of enemies, but it's likely to be regular division, uh, regular infantry divisions and not just coastal uh, stuff. Now there is a narrative in the designer notes, um, which is one of the things I love about this game, or this uh, campaign. Uh, doo -doo -doo. We can't lose a mission. Otherwise, the campaign ends. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. So, without further ado, let's uh, read the little narrative and see where we get to. C Company Headquarters, Captain Evans, uh, Commanding Officer, Company C, 1st Battalion, 58th Parachute, which regiment hails from Virginia. Uh, this first lieutenant Bouts, Bouts, the executive officer, quiet, bespectacled young man from Boston. Many doubt he had the mental fortitude to become a paratrooper. I'm gonna write this stuff down, so I can note when they get shot, because they're gonna get shot. Actually, no, we'll just try and remember. He surprised everyone with his determination, but he still rarely talks and looks like he belongs more in a library than jumping with the Red Devils. Uh, if you don't like this, just skip ahead like uh, five-ish minutes. Got PFC Bales, radio man. He worked in electronics in California. He's Catholic. And he's the most technically proficient radio say radio man in the 82nd. Uh, we've got Second Lieutenant Spurgeon, Second Lieutenant Ford. Spurgeon is calm and collected. He's the best all-around platoon leader. Uh, Ford. He hails from California. He's cheerful and creative. The youngest one. And, uh, occasionally he is too creative for his own good. And we got Second Lieutenant Johnson. Former Colgate wrestler from Minnesota. Stoic and stubborn. He's known for his bull like obstinacy and determination to face the enemy. Alright. Let's get to actually fighting. Or reading more. Because reading is nice. I just realized I'm gonna get copyright claimed for this music. Damn. Eh, worth it. Hmm. Here come the devils. We gotta seize and occupy the farm. We have Captain Evans. We gotta hold this line. Yeah, we do have to hold the line, apparently. Alright. Captain Evans felt a sharp jerk as his parachute opened. He scanned the skies above him, trying to assess how well the drop was going. He noticed his chalk was in good formation and thought, Good, it should be pretty easy to assemble once we're on the ground. <laughs> the cloudy air made it difficult to see much further than his own chalk. 
The moon was also mostly obscured by the clouds, so most of the lighting was provided by German anti-aircraft guns, and searchlights a terrifying, if beautiful, scene. Captain Evans was torn away from his reverie by the realization that he was approaching the ground. Fuck, he mumbled as he realized he was headed for a tree line. Couldn't aim his descent, though, so he had no recourse other than to brace for the inevitable impact. With a tremendous crashing and rustling, his body plowed through the upper branches of the tree, and he found his body hanging just above the ground, suspended only by his parachute cords. With difficulty, he grabbed his knife and set about cutting himself free. Evans fell awkwardly to the ground, but after gingerly testing his legs and arms, he realized he hadn't sustained any serious injury from his landing in the tree. His equipment lay only 15 feet away, in the middle of a sunken lane. As he picked up his M1 Garand and gathered the rest of his equipment, he saw PFC bales off to his right. Wow, Evans thought, my stick's landing really tight. <laughs> he walked over to the radio man, who was on his knees fiddling with his radio. You good to go, Bales? Uh, not sure, sir. I don't think you're going to like this. What is it? I think the radio's busted, sir. Well, fuck, said Evans. Although he then noticed that a broken radio was a small price to pay for such a tight grouping of his paratroopers' landings. All right, Bales, saddle up. We need to find more of our guys and get moving. The radio man nodded his ascent. Ascent? Keep your eyes open. Jeez, oh, I'm gonna have to. And the pair began moving along the sunken lane. Only thirty feet down the sunken lane, the lane intersected with another one at an angle. Evans heard movement, dropped his knees, raised his rifle, and whispered, and challenged a whisper. Flash! Thunder! came the familiar sounding reply. Who's there? Glad we found you first so fast, sir, whispered Lieutenant Johnson, getting a few. Our stacks dropped pretty tight. I've got all my platoon headquarters and the whole squad that jumped in on a bird. Sergeant Mulligan is looking. He paused and peered down the road he'd emerged from. Yeah, you found a bunch of guys to jump with you, sir. Among the paratroopers hustled down the road towards the intersection was Lieutenant Botts. Good to see you, sir, whispered Evans XO. Looks like we found him. Looks like we got one good squad here, and there's another one coming down the road. Let's move out and see if we can find some more. Good idea, Bots, said Evans. The paratroopers all began moving along the road in the opposite direction which Lieutenant Bots had come. Upon approaching the hedge road on this side of the road, they heard a rustling noise that abruptly stopped. The soldiers all dropped to their knees and aimed their rifles at the bocage. With a hand signal, Johnson and his two soldiers began moving closer. Flash, he whispered. Nachmal, came the response. Johnson raised his voice slightly. All right, Fritz. Hold it right there, you're a dead man, he said as he identified the shape of the German sentry on the other end of the hedge and pointed his garand at it. The German sentry's eyes widened and instantly took over as he tore away from the hedge at a small building near about 100 feet away and ran screaming, Amis! as he went. Johnson's garand barked and his screams ceased. Fuck, said Johnson as he shrank back to the eastern part of the hedge grove. What is it, sir? asked one of his wide-eyed paratroopers. Johnson looked at the man who was about to say something, but stopped. Then, all of the pressures began to hear the sound of doors opening in the farm complex. In the field beyond the hedgerow, the panic shouting of the German. Johnson lackadaisically thrust his thumb in the direction of the farm. That's what, Private! Lieutenant Box began evaluating the surrounding terrain. Sir, we're going to need to take out that farm complex if more waves are coming in after us. If the crowds are still there when dawn breaks, they'll fuck us up. Agreed, replied Evans, and he began to issue his orders. Right. Well, welcome to Normandy. I'm gonna check and make sure that doesn't uh, run too long. I'll I'll put Stay a timestamp to get here. Also, extra helmets. All right, we gotta take this farmhouse and this central complex and stuff. First thing to do is uh, assault this house. There are probably some Germans in here. Like, most likely. Considering the fact that we just shot one and he was running back there. Um, general plan for this. This field's really open. There's no point to a frontal assault along that way. We'll move here, assault the house while moving past it this way. And then we'll move up this road. And launch our assault from the cover over here, which will get us in close. We'll maintaining a base of fire from right there. Got it? Good. No point 
Point in Russian things. So we'll keep these guys as the base of fire in case anyone opens up from over here, they'll suppress them. This way. Meanwhile, these troops will move up to assault this house. And this lieutenant will just hang out there. And uh, this squad will also advance. We'll probably have a... Um, C Company and the Headquarters Support Team uh, provide the base of fire here as they're mostly rifles with a few uh, submachine guns and carbines. Stay with me. There. Stay short. Yeah, don't shout. Be super sneaky quiet. Keep your mouth shut. Follow me. Oh yeah, we'll go ahead and keep that assault and move in. Why can my men not be the sneak? Probably gonna get Evans to move down that way a bit. I like to shift my guys to move uh, right around here ish. probably bounce these guys forward right about there at which point well, they should really see someone if there's anyone there they'll see them PFC Bales is still carrying on that damn radio That's just dedication to duty. No, sir, they told me not to leave the radio behind, so I didn't. Alright, now we're gonna cross the road. Shift a second squad up to here. I'll bounce these boys forward to right about there. Because I don't want to be behind the tree line too much. I want to be kind of along the tree line so they can see it here as opposed to having all these trees in their way. I'll have just a few trunks. And hell, we'll probably set a base of fire right about there. Someone's in there. I think it's safe to say they know we're here. Also, someone has an MG42. Alright, really, really important right now. Everyone hide. guys give that thing a 45 second pause so yeah that's a hell of an introduction to France alright so we've got what looks to be a um, platoon commander right there so we know this house is occupied. 
some sort of machine gun up there. Hmm. I'll probably have these guys lay low for about three minutes while this force moves left. Just not give them anything to shoot at. Fuck shooting. And it's quiet again. Probably have one squad set up here. And the commander over here. Moderately protected from fire by the house, but still able to provide covering fire on a decent portion of it. Looks like all the shooting has stopped. Which means I can bound these guys forward. Gonna make my entrance over here. And luckily, we have demolition charges. So it's gonna be one hell of an entrance. So yeah, there's that outpost destroyed. <laughs> Wrong place to run to. Good job, guys.
Alright, hell, fine. Let's let's do it. Let's boogie. Actually, now let's. Everybody, just stop. I said stop, damn it. I swear to God, Shrupner, if you don't stop shooting, I'll shoot you myself. Yeah, that's why. You're getting involved in a long range firefight with an MG42. With one, two, three, four, five, six rifles. The one time I don't want you to shoot the Krauts. You insist on shooting them. Everyone take position. Eyes forward. Just lie down. allow us to cover here and here, which allows us to bounce these guys up here to enter through the back. Which they shouldn't be expecting with most of our contacts being over there. We got reinforcements. I have a bazooka. You can go there. And this is useful. You're gonna shoot up something. Yeah, we'll put him over here. We'll catch him when he tries to retreat in a vice. Sure, we got just fine. Also, it should give time for any other reinforcements that may be coming to catch up. Looks like we're beginning the assault phase. Except those guys are ahead of us. So I'll actually just go ahead and skip covering that area. I'll just cover that one instead. I know there's someone in this house. Alright, all of our guys are lined up here. Everyone ready? Ready, ready.
Oh, hey. Ooh, hey. That's a mortar. If you can, find a way to get your sweet butt over here. Go. Demo charge, demo charge, demo charge, and rockets. Now well, there's there's a way to make an entrance and a way to make an entrance. Actually, no, I have a better idea. There's someone in there. And I am sure as hell gonna find him. By destroying that house. With small arms fire. So that went really well. Uh, except that guy got shot. Dumbass. What did you do? Pull the trigger and get shot immediately? Alright. Uh, let's get through this stupid hedgerow. Boy, let's get over there. Oh, and you guys, uh. You guys go ahead and shoot anything that moves. We have enough for a real nice base of fire now. Alright, I'll go ahead and keep them suppressed using that. Keep firing with these guys and we'll just kind of assault our way in there. Shift those troops over that way. I don't think it's really worth using the uh, assault command on there. No, not yet. We're not going to assault that yet. Is that our 30 cal? That is our 30 cal. Morning. Is it morning? Yeah, it's 2 in the morning. Damn, we took it casually. Alright, time to clear all the targets and... Don't shoot. No, keep shooting. Don't just shoot randomly now, though. No, actually, 
sure you boys keep salt. one up here and then just down here. I guess I'll call in some orders when they're set up. Huh. Well is he dead? That's the real question. Oh he's just real wounded. He'll be fine. Kinda. Yeah target briefly. Let's Throw a 30 second thingy on there just so that they know to do it. And we'll go take that house. Wait, shit, I forgot to put a. I forgot to put a pause timer on there. Luckily, they make their own luck. Apparently. I don't think it matters where you go, mate. <laughs> yeah, nope. Get liberated, bitch. Yeah, they're running around like... Oh, no, something that runs around crazy. Rats in a cage? Nah. take that. We'll start moving them in to clear out that house. And I'll move these guys up to here. Those guys will just keep up the fire. And uh, we'll bounce them up there. And these guys will bounce up into here. And we'll just kind of swing through and clear the house. And meanwhile, that guy can just kind of keep shooting everyone. Actually, is there anyone in that house? No? Alright. We'll get him eventually. It looks like the base of fire is very awake. Alright, let's, let's get to it. Sir, I'm gonna pushing up real hard on these houses. So no casualties, first of all. I just wanted to make sure that happens. So they're we're really cutting down a lot of retreating Germans. I don't think the Germans really know where to go. Yeah, we've worked ourselves into a nice little thing. We got a base of fire here, killing him when he runs that way. We're just gonna push him out that way. You know, I just realized that there are holes in this hedgerow pre made. I didn't have to use one of my satchel charges. Take 
take a moment to appreciate the speed at which they're eliminating their targets. Where's the entrance here? Is that an entrance? Oh yeah, I trust it to be one. Actually, no, I don't. I get enough people killed by accident as it is anyway. That doesn't work, we'll blast our way through that wall. Speed and aggressive action are the keys here, it seems. I think my mortars are more dangerous to me than they are to the damn Krauts. I'm really not sure what camera angle to give it from here. <laughs> Wrong way. <laughs> Damn. Whoa, shit, that's way better than I've lost three men. One man was killed, two were wounded. The Germans have three people left alive. I think it's those. No? Oh, what are their instats? Seven wounded, three okay. So that's what, one, two, three. What? Wow, that's... What? Three okay. Seven minutes. miss. Oh, okay, missing. He must be one of the missing. It took us 16 minutes. <laughs> to transform this lovely farmstead. Damn, okay. Welcome to Normandy. I'll have to turn that music off. Alright. Here's one thing I love about the campaign. That's not normally included in other ones, but I just love about this. Um, you get to choose your next course of action. It's kind of dynamic like that. Except it's... Or it's, um, it's branching. <clears throat> uh, I don't know if I want to read all this stuff. Maybe you guys can read if you guys want to. I'll give you the gist of it. Uh, Evans meets a bunch of guys. Basically, we find the rest of a portion of our company. Another, uh, platoon, I think it is. And uh, so we send out a patrol down on the road. They come back and say there's a town that's got maybe got some Germans in it. We send it back to find out for sure.
Alright. So there's a church. And if there's a guy inside the church tower, our glider landings are beyond fucked. So we're gonna go clean it out. And we're hanging out. Waiting for our scouts to clear some stuff up when there's an explosion and a bunch of shots and shooting and shouting. And uh, then they come running back and he says, and they blew up the roadblock. Hmm. So the decision here is the town in front of us is occupied by a bunch of Germans. Um, and we may or may not have just kicked the hornet's nest really hard, like as hard as possible. Um, so they know we're here. So the decision is do we wait for Spurgeon's platoon to show up? Where we go ahead and kick in the door and take the damn village. And, uh, I'll decide the next part. Till then, uh, see you guys around. Good day.